It was a splendid morning on the island of Sodor. James was feeling very pleased with himself. His red paint gleamed in the sunshine as he sped along the line. It sure was a nice day. The sun makes it clear out there, and all the sets James drives through are always great to look at. Also, James's musical theme is great to hear again. It sounds slightly altered, but that's okay. He then came across Percy, who was hauling trucks. Percy was tired because the trucks were not cooperating. James, on the other hand, felt he wasn't working hard enough. And Percy felt he was being unreasonable. Bossy buffers, muttered Percy. James arrived at the harbor. It was market day. The harbor yard was filled with the sweet smell of fruit from faraway lands. And the sweet sound of the harbor queue as well. Uh, I just can't get over that theme. It's so relaxing. But going back to Percy and James's end of things, I get both sides of the debate. James should recognize that not every trip will be smooth sailing, while Percy shouldn't be defeated so easily. By the time James left Arlsberg Harbor, his trucks were filled with all kinds of fruity delights. And of course, being that he felt his job was the most important, he went around bragging it to everyone else. Really reliable, that's me, panted James. Pity the same can't be said for Percy. Goodbye. What was all that about? Gasped Annie and Clarabelle. That was trouble. First of all, I like how Thomas already knows what's on the way. Kind of like he's now figured out what the heck a Gordonism actually is. On top of that, I love that Annie and Clarabelle got to say something for once. It's been a long time since they've said anything up until now anyway and let alone our little blue tanker was right. Percy, who was working in the Lower Sudry's shunting yards, caught wind that James stalled after locking up his brakes. Percy quickly set off to the rescue. James was stuck on the line and looking glum. Percy couldn't help laughing. I could see why, too. After being so harshly criticized by Mr. Traffic Redhead, Percy felt like now was no better time to get even. He did this by making all kinds of jam and other fruity type puns. James was in no mood for teasing, especially since his minor Gordonism backfired. So now Percy took the trucks while James sat still. Little did he or his driver realize was that the line they were on had a switch failure. And by the time he or his driver figured that out, well, Percy was in his own gookie mess. <laughs> Sir Topham had arrived. Percy, you are not to blame for the switch failure, but I do not run a jam factory. Yes, sir, uh, no, sir. I don't know why, but Top Hat's line is well written for this event. However, I don't think we ever had two Gordonisms in one episode for a while. I'm not saying we truly needed it, but I'm not saying it wasn't the wrong thing to do either. At the end of the day, both James and Percy were feeling awfully silly. But to help break the awkwardness, Thomas spoke up which is rare considering we haven't heard much from him this season anyway. You know, he said to no engine in particular, there's more than one way to get jammed. Still, there was silence. What's more, we also learned that sometimes when engines help each other out of a jam, things can still go wrong. So, said a voice, so, that means we learned a lot today, and therefore... Then came a chorus. We're really useful engines after all. That was a unique way of ending an episode. Most of the time, stories ended with just the engine of focus learning a lesson. Here, we basically get almost the whole main crew agreeing with one another. That's not shown very often. As for the story itself, as I said, having two Gordonisms in one story doesn't happen a lot. I think the last time that happened was in Tenders and Turntables from Season 1. Here, for the most part, James and Percy both got what was coming to them. They both picked on each other and sang who was better, and ended up both looking like fools in the end. If I had a choice though, I would go with James's problem. I'd hate to be covered in mashed fruit. I feel like that would be harder to clean off, unless a power washer was available. 
I also enjoyed the fact that this story involved Percy and James. Both have shared the screen together in other stories, but none of them focused on both of them at the same time for an entire story. So this is a good change in direction. The specific locations to this episode were very much standard at this point. Arlesburg Harbor, the interior of Tidmouth Sheds, the Lower Sudry Shunting Yards, the Three Tier Bridge, the Sodor Trading Company, Tidmouth Tunnel, and the Three Way Road all appear and are no stranger to the viewer by now. If anything though, what is nice to see are some of the random lines that run across the island that don't have names. Seeing the lush green pastures and hilly mountainsides in the background is very pretty. As for music, three iconic cues are heard, and they are just as welcome as others that have come before it. In the beginning, James's theme is heard, then the harbor theme when James picks up his fruity goods, and then Percy's when he swaps trucks with James. A simple but enjoyable entry. Finally, we are hitting the last episode of season three. Next episode is Thomas and Percy's Christmas adventure. Thanks for watching.